Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 13th of June, 2023. Coming up this episode of the Tuesday Rant, Chris Kick Podcast. Aaron O'Toole stepping down. An MPP apparently punched in the face at some protest. And Canadian forces need better kit. Oh, my God. God, all that more about the show. Please stick around. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. Why? Because I swear and I smoke cigarettes. See you in a bit. Cheers. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. He is Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Tuesday rant on this beautiful 13th of June, 2023. Hello again, I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, and on this Tuesday, basically like this did last Tuesday, I'm just going to rant on things here. I've got some articles and stuff to show you all at a regular uh, speed here. But uh, this rant is kind of special because in 2021, I ran against a conservative, a member of the PPC, the NDP, the Liberals, the Greens. And uh, I had an interesting talk with uh, the NDP runner and our rep here in, in Alberta. And we had some interesting talks about politics, economy, policies, PTSD, and all the good stuff. And I even said to my conservative running mate there, um, I don't really respect Aaron O'Toole. Now, he's stepping down. He just stepped down. He planned to do it. He mentioned it in March before, too. So I know some people might be upset and everything. You know. <laughs> Let's just say the last two weeks of the election, Aaron O'Toole didn't really do much for uh, gun rights, didn't really want to tackle the carbon tax. Uh, he more or less became a woke individual, conservative light, red Tory, I guess you can say. So needless to say, he was full of shit. So I really don't care if he's coming or going, whatever. He spent 10 years in politics. He spent the better part, I think, 12 years in the military uh, as a flight engineer. So he was an officer. So he gets a cushy pension as an officer from the military. And he's going to get a cushy pension from the gain taxpayer as a former uh, MP, right, former leader of the conservative party. Now, what annoys me the most about Mr. O'Toole is not because um, he's a fellow vet. I got a lot of respect for fellow vets. I don't care what profession you get into. Uh, the fact that he stood on certain conservative principles when it came to people keeping their money, keeping taxes low, letting liberty reign, that kind of thing. And the last two weeks of that election, he just kind of fizzled and tried to cater to Justin Trudeau's kind of crowd. Right. So when I listen to this clown talk about uh, being fair and open and transparent and giving people a hard time for waving the old F Trudeau flag. I'm thinking, okay, you know, I can understand professional decorum. I can understand professional dedication, but do you not see the reason why people were waving that flag to begin with? Do you not see why people bought that flag in record numbers? Why it's proudly displayed alongside our maple leaf? Right. Pierre Polyev has got it right. Canadians are angry. Canadians are pissed. Canadians are, are, are fed up with a lot of this shit. Okay. And it, it's really, to me, to me, no big loss that Mr. O'Toole is stepping down. You know, it, it, it's no big loss. And I'll just queue up an article here uh, from the National Post about uh, Aaron O'Toole, you know, uh, stepping off uh, into uh, the sunset of political, you know, entropy or whatever the hell. Uh, but needless to say, <laughs> I'm just not really, really thoroughly impressed. And I really don't care. But for you, my wonderful audience, I will make an exception. I know tool plead to conservatives as he steps down as party leader. Here, the other side. Uh, that's from 2022. Right. Um, nah, I'm not going to read this. Screw it. I'll just leave the link. <laughs> I just uh, I'm not happy with the man. You know, I, I was not happy with the man. And I'll just leave this link in the description for you guys to follow at your own leisure. See, I changed my mind. Kind of like a politician. I just changed my mind. Ooh, interesting, interesting. Anyhow, carrying on. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, you know, good luck in, in your endeavors, but um, you kind of cowered. You, you gave in to the other side. You gave in. You gave up your principles as a conservative. Okay, you gave up your principles as a leader. Okay, 
And I'm a little annoyed, too, that you were an officer in the Air Force. So it doesn't matter what branch of the military service you're in. You, you, you train to be an officer. You have to be a leader. You have to make those tough decisions, especially if you're in a helicopter, especially if you're dealing with personnel, equipment, key equipment, too. And uh, as a conservative, you, sir, failed. So good luck in your endeavors. And, uh, you know, just don't come back again. That is all. Anyway, carry on with more of the Tuesday rant on the Chris Keck podcast. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck. Right. Uh, apparently, they had a big protest in Ottawa in regards to um, <clears throat> in regards to parents being allowed to know what their kids are doing in school because there are some teachers out there that believe um, that gender identity should be hidden. And uh, some teachers believe that if a kid named Sam wants to be identified as Samantha, then we have to keep that secret from their parents. Uh, to make a long story short, there's too much woke involved in our educational system right now. And both sides of the spectrum are sitting there screaming about homophobia and who's gay, who isn't gay. So I'll just summarize this up here, too. I don't care how you raise your kids as long as they're safe and secure. They're fed and they come home to a safe home. OK, but I will state this, ladies and gentlemen, the state has no place in anyone's bedroom or in anyone's family dynamic. Like I said, if the kids are safe and they're well fed and they're loved and they're looked after, that's all. And I don't care what nouveau uh, teaching format that some teachers have. I don't care what some uh, teachers think about the gender spectrum. Okay. I really don't give a shit. What I give a shit about is that little Billy can read. And then when little Billy hits 13 or 14, whenever puberty hits him, he can make a decision for himself or little Sarah can make a decision for herself. Okay. It doesn't matter. And it, it seems like every time there's this transgender protest, there's so many people that are up in arms and want to cause some shit somewhere, somehow. Okay. And I'll put an article here. Uh, here's an MPP, apparently an Ontario uh, MPP with the uh, NDP party. Of course, no surprise there. Right. No, no surprise at all in regards to uh, you know, the real social spectrums in our lives. But now uh, I'm digressing here. Apparently, this individual was hit in the face. So he claims uh, this is from Joe Warmington, the Toronto Sun. Uh, MPP punched in the face at a transgender protest, question mark, or was it cut from a megaphone, right? And NDP MPP Joel Harden uh, from uh, Ontario. You know, the question is, was an Ontario MPP punched in the face or did he accidentally cut himself with a megaphone? It seems people on all sides experienced it differently. Those in favor of trans education in schools feel this way was a hateful attack. It illustrates the danger of LGBTQ plus people are in while opponents ask if this is Canada's own Jesse Smollett, <laughs> a moment where an actor in Chicago falsely claimed to be attacked by two men wearing mega hats. Meanwhile, the NDP MPP says, while well, he was punched in the face at protest Friday over transgender ideology and acceptance in schools, he does not want to bring the police into it. Okay. Well, I'll leave this article for you all to read. <laughs> Excuse me. On your own. Basically, this guy was at this protest. Okay. He was at this protest talking about how, uh, you know, protesting the whole transgender thing and safe spaces for all that. Now, I know for a fact that gender dysphoria is a real thing. Gender dysphoria, or dysmorphia, whatever it is, okay. And a good, strong family unit can sort that issue out, okay? But to sit there and automatically say that it, just because little Billy's playing dolls one day that he's a girl, no. Because yours truly here, ladies and gentlemen, played dolls with my little sisters. Okay. Yes, I played Barbie and combed their hair and, you know, put makeup on my sister and all that kind of stuff. And she dressed me up. And I didn't turn into a drag king or drag queen. Um, I'm biological male. I'm married to a wonderful lady. And everything turned out just fine. And guess what my sisters did? They used to put on my hockey gear and go and play hockey with me. Does that mean they're super powerful hockey players? Or they're down-to-earth good mothers that are married to good men. Hmm. Interesting. Is there some kind of conspiracy towards this? Ooh. No. It's life. So all these people are up in arms about transgenderism and uh, protecting kids. Are you really protecting kids? Honestly? Think about this. As a libertarian, okay, when those kids grow up to be adults, do what the hell you want. 
Do what you want. I don't care what you do, right? Don't hit people, take their stuff. And that has a literal meaning and it has a figurative meaning too. Meaning don't take something from a kid just because you think they should have this. Don't take that from a kid because you think they should have that. Let kids grow, leave kids alone. Now, I'll tell you a little story here, ladies and gentlemen. I used to work on a base in the base gym administratively, and I was working my way into sports stores, which was basically going to be a steady full-time gig. Not bad. Pay wasn't bad. Good benefits, what have you, too. So plus my pension and that pay, things were looking good. Now, I had a conversation with one of the staff. It was a conversation. It wasn't an accusation or nothing. Make a long story short, that staff member got offended because I said the following words, leave kids alone. She didn't like that. She thought I was anti-gay. She thought I was transphobic, right? And this is also coming from a person, too, that's about $68,000 in debt because of student loans to get herself a great education. And yet she never ate humble pie. So what's that tell you, ladies and gentlemen? The woke mob is everywhere, every little corner, every little crevice, okay? I don't care if Steven one day gets up and says, hey, I'm going to be a drag queen and I'm going to emulate Stevie Nicks. I don't care. I don't care if Cheryl gets up one day and she says, I'm going to emulate Elvis Presley. I don't care. Knock yourself out, fill your boots, do what you want to do. Love who you want, care about who you want, as long as it's between consenting adults. Because you can look up gay is against groomers. You can look up uh, actual drag queens that have spoken out against this monstrosity about drag queen story time, forcing the transgender issue down kids' throats. For God's sakes, people, let kids be kids. That's all you got to do. That is all you have to freaking do. That is all. Doesn't cost you a fortune. You might have to spend a little more time and patience and explain to little Billy or Sarah how this works, how that works, whatever. Okay. But you're messing with people's liberty here. Okay. You're messing with people's liberty here. How is it effective for a little kid to go under the knife, to get his privates cut away, to get a little girl, to get her memory glands cut away, to change everything up, to mess the medicine up, and then what? What are you going to promote? It's affirming care. It's affirming care, or is it assimilation into something? Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I have had conversations with two trans individuals one individual went under the knife and became a female you know got the whole nip and tuck and all that good stuff basically got herself a vagina okay and she acknowledges that she used to be a male she goes by a different name now but she doesn't buy this crap either too so this is not hateful content i'm promoting to you this is my rant leave kids alone for crying out loud like really let them grow into their own mold. If Billy looks at Scotty in a different light once he hits puberty, well, we got news for Billy and Scotty. If Sarah decides that Billy's pretty hot and she hits puberty, well, what do you know? Or maybe she's looking at her friend Stephanie in a different light. Who cares? What does it matter? Right? You keep saying love is love. What kind of love are you promoting by slicing and dicing like that to little kids and encouraging little kids to read garbage? They shouldn't be reading about fellatio. They should be reading about mathematics. They should be reading about how two and two equals four. Something like that, you know, but I guess that's just too racist, eh? Oh, that's just too bigoted. Yeah. Look, cry me a fucking river. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking here to see, please click like and subscribe and share this content all over your social media platforms too. You can find my podcast on Podbean, Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, Grow Radio UK, and Player FM. Just look for Krusty Canuck and that fancy logo you see in the top right hand of your screen and see my mug advertising some decent and I think genuine, honest Canadian content. So as I was saying, in this Tuesday rant, we just talked about Aaron O'Toole and the so-called MPP that, you know, went through a hate crime apparently now i'll leave that article in the links for you to follow and uh just think about this whole issue with our kids okay i have i, I have some young nieces and nephews uh, that are having a hard time as it is and let, let alone having some teacher 
tell them the meaning of life by you can be a girl, you can be a boy, and you can fly away to Never Never Land because everything is just false. Uh, we'll make decisions for you. <laughs> no, keep the state out of it. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm not going to get too emotional. I know it's a rant here, but I'm not going to too emotional here. Right. But if you like and hear what you see, please, once again, click like and subscribe, share this content all over your social media platforms. And to my rumblers out there, thank you. I'm getting a couple more subscribers. So a nice big round of applause. For you out there too. Special thank you again to uh, the fine people at Northern Perspective. Uh, check out their videos on YouTube. They do some great videos. They are very, very conservative based, but they also believe in freedom and liberty too. So check out their work as well, ladies and gentlemen. I caught their live stream there the other night and it was just really a good show, a good turnout and just a real good positive vibe. And you, my wonderful audience, I expect you out there to keep clicking and sharing Canadian content. Let's beat these bastards at C11 and beat them to the punch. Get the algorithm going. Share this content. You don't have to watch my whole show. Try to watch at least three or four minutes of it and share it to somebody. Share it here. Share it there. And they tell two friends and they tell two friends. You know how it goes and all that, too. Anyway, carrying on, too, uh, with this Tuesday rant. I mentioned Erdogan Tool. I mentioned the MPP who claimed a hate crime when really... There's footage about him there with a megaphone to his face, and he's pressing it against his face as he's speaking his garbage, okay? Everyone has the right to protest to speak their mind, okay? But then if you cut yourself by doing something stupid, and you take responsibility for it, don't say, oh, it's a hate crime. Someone punched me in the face. Because you keep promoting that bullshit. Someone is really going to punch you in the face, and no one's going to believe you. We all know the Jesse Smollett story, how he convinced the world that he was a victim when he actually hired two Nigerian bodyguards to tune him in. I don't know. Maybe he's into that sort of thing. I don't know, but I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that as I pause and ponder. <laughs> Anyhow, carrying on. Uh, more of the uh, rant here. Uh, we have an embarrassing gear shortage as gear shortage as Canadian troops in Latvia are buying their own helmets. Okay, now this is from the CBC, and this came out on the 5th of June, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll put this article up here for you to read. I'll read this article for sure now. Okay. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing because as an ex-member of the Canadian military, we had our share of issues too when it came to procurement and when it came to, uh, you know, <clears throat> looking after the things that need to be looked after because our procurement board is such a shit show and our leadership is is a shit show. So this is from June 5th. Soldiers also have been purchasing rain gear and equipment belts. So uh, there's a... A phrase of soldiers used to describe the equipment they've bought themselves to argument when the army gives them. They call it Gucci gear after a luxury fashion designer. Yeah, Gucci kit. We used to say that all the time, too. For Canadian troops deployed in Latvia, those private purchases have been decidedly more practical than luxurious. Given the fact they're taking part in more live fire training exercises meant to deter Russia from setting foot in the Baltic country. Uh, they've been buying their own modern ballistic helmets equipped with built-in hearing protection that doubles as a headset. They've also personally purchased rain gear and vests and belts to carry water and ammunition. And the number of complaints about the ill-fitting body armor issued to female soldiers has been growing. These purchases, usually made through online retailers, involve uh, brand name tactical gear or weapon accessories that make soldiers' existing gear more personal and more comfortable to wear. Okay. Canadian troops in Latvia are grappling with more urgent equipment shortages as well. The battle group is roughly 1,500 soldiers, including more than 700 Canadians, lacks modern anti-tank weapon systems to counter drones, and a dedicated short-range air defense system to guard against helicopters and attack jets. Those frustrations have only been compounded by the arrival of more Allied troops, among them Danish soldiers who are in some cases arriving with Canadian purchase gear that makes them better equipped than Canadian soldiers. In general, it was concerning, verging on embarrassing to see the differences in issued soldier equipment between us and the Danes, said Lieutenant Colonel Jesse Van Elk, the Canadian Battle Group Commander in Latvia, on May 12, 2023, email obtained by CBC News. Okay, this was only exaggerated by the fact that we are carrying more advanced Canadian-made Colt Canada rifles, mounting more advanced Canadian LCAN DR sites, and the fact that most of our systems our soldiers lacked were easily available to the open market and not to some sort of closely guarded technology. For more than three decades, the Danes have been using a variety of Canadian-made weapons, including the C7 assault rifle and the C8 carbine. CBC News requested an interview with Van Elk, but he declined through the Department of National Defense. Hartman said in a written statement that this email was a response to concerns raised during recent staff visit from the Army's Directorate of Equipment and Program Management. 
Okay, so I will leave this here. Now they're scurrying, scurrying to get everything delivered next year. Okay, we've heard that before. I remember when our combats came in in 2002. They were in trials for about three to four years to see if this stuff works. So we've always had a tiny military, yet every time we have a trial or procurement, something comes in the in the works that, oh, we need this and we need that and they update this, update that. So basically it's a line of bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. It's not right. You want to send soldiers in harm's way, you make sure they have their equipment. It doesn't matter if they're fighting someone. It doesn't matter if they're attacking someone. It doesn't matter if they're peacekeeping or peacemaking. Okay. You make sure they got their gear and what works for them. Okay. Not what works for the bean counters and the penny pushers that sit in Ottawa making 180,000 bucks a year. These are men and women that deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. Period. It's not negotiable. Okay. Now, I've seen the factory where the weapons are made for our troops. It's a beautiful factory. And the Danish military has bought a lot of Canadian gear. And they've upgraded it and they've modernized it to what their soldiers need. Now, what's our excuse? I remember the Kretschen government back in 2002 stating that, oh, we, we, we shouldn't send our troops to Afghanistan with a desert camel because it looks too aggressive. Well, for fuck's sakes, you sent people into a war zone. What do you expect them to do? Let's have a parade and talk about our feelings, shall we? <laughs> what a fun time. <laughs> Again, what a shit show. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And again, you're back with the Tuesday Rant, episode 210. Yeah, that's right, Mr. O'Toole stepping down. Some MPP in a supposed hate crime because they got punched in the face. And the embarrassment that our troops need. Uh, more kit. So if you can send our men and women into a country to train other militaries how to do this and how to do that, you should at least look the part, right? Okay. Are you going to send firefighters to a training academy with those plastic hats you can find at Walmart for a buck fifty? No. <laughs> Are you going to send police officers train other police officers with water pistols? <laughs> no. No, of course not. You know, are you going to train a firefighter how to put out a car fire with a fucking garden hose? No. So why do you have to treat our troops that way? Eh? No, there's no money here, no money there, but you can send another $5 million to Ukraine, though, eh? There's a lot of people in this country that can use that $500 million bucks. A lot of good people, not just vets, not just soldiers, seniors, First Nations, people that are struggling, right? You can take that $500 million and invest it in proper techniques in regards to keeping water clean and to the, the innovations for the sake of the climate catastrophe that you're also fucking worried about, which is a joke because our premier here in Alberta is actually putting together an investigation team to find out if these fires were intentionally set rather than so-called climate change. Mr. Gilbo, you putz. Anyway, in closing, I just want to say that I really don't care that Mr. O'Toole is stepping down because he didn't prove himself to be a leader. And to that MPP out there who wants to instigate a hate crime, you're crying wolf, buddy. And for what? For what? Virtue points? Think about the people, okay, in your district. Think about your, who you're representing, too. Okay? Your constituents should have a say in something in this. And if I was a constituent in your riding, you know, I'd be writing a lot of fucking letters saying, why are you pretending you got hit when really you're just being incompetent? Why are you, why are you crying wolf? Totally unprofessional. And I know an Ontario MPP makes about 150000 bucks a year. So if you want to keep your job, then maybe you should do your job. Okay? And to the civilian bean counters, and maybe some of the brass too, if you happen to be watching this podcast, okay, when it comes to procurement and defense responsibilities, I'm going to say this once. Smarten the fuck up. Okay? The average Canadian is catching on to this BS. The average Canadian is paying attention to this BS on what you lot are promoting. That's not just senior brass. That's middle brass. That's civilian components, too. 
with excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. Now, sometime in the future, I'm going to have a guest on my podcast who actually worked in the procurement process of the military. And he's got some great stories for you all too. So I'll get him on here, hopefully in a couple of weeks time, right? Maybe on one of the rants or maybe in just a regular podcast. Needless to say, we've got some stories coming up and I got some good things planned in the future for you, my wonderful audience out there. You beautiful people. So like I say, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe, share this content all over around. Let's beat C11 right to the F and punch and stand up for what this country represents. All of you. Doesn't matter what color, what creed, what gender spectrum that you want. Leave kids alone. Let them grow to decide for themselves. Just be there to guide them with positivity, encouragement, dedication, discipline, and love. It's that simple. Quit trying to change everything. Stop trying to reinvent the fucking wheel. Let's people get, let people get back to work. Let's regulate government and not free markets. I've been Krusty Canuck. On this beautiful 13th of June, 2023, I wish nothing but good things for all of you out there. Okay. Stand, stand proud, stand high. I don't care what you do. Love who you want. It's okay to be you. All that good stuff. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, humanity merit wins the day. Stay tuned this coming weekend for another episode of the Crusty Out Podcast. Take care, and I'll see you later. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy.